I need to hit continue on here. Oh yes, I think you ask for your um, your consent or something like that. Okay. But yeah, we'll be good. Thank you. We just been talking hijack. So like I said, hijack, huh? <laughs> I move that I have we never heard that before. Uh, we have everyone identify themselves, uh, state your name, and whether you're virtual or on the phone. Um, Sandra Collins, virtual. Colin Bober, Bober virtual. Wanda Gilbert Coker via phone, maybe virtual a few times. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um, I appreciate everybody uh, rearranging their schedule to meet today. Um, you know, our normal uh, schedule of meeting would have been uh, on Wednesday. Um, but there was um, something bigger than uh, the Fair Housing Hearing Board meeting. It was an awesome, awesome, awesome day. So I was in front of the television until almost midnight. So memories. Um, I wanna make a motion to approve the agenda for today. I second that. And moving forward and make a motion to approve the minutes. Um, so you need to vote really quickly after you have your second. If y'all can, yeah, oh. all in favor, yeah, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. We got three ayes. <laughs> I hope no one goes back and listen to these recordings. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, Marquita, the minutes have, is that just a, an error that it says draft? Yeah, so they're draft until you all, you all vote on them and then we'll upload them into the, we'll take the draft watermark off. <laughs> so that's something new. Yeah, it's funny you caught that. No, it's fine. It's something new every month. Uh, motion to approve the minutes dated December 20th, 2020. I second the, the minutes, approval of the minutes from December. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Ms. Wanda. Hi. Could y'all questions uh, from the minutes? Okay. Any? I think we're all okay. We're gonna move move on right on along. Um, is our city council liaison here today, or did he send us any? No, no updates. Questions? No, no, not this time. <laughs> Not this time. What I'll do is I'll um, reach out to his staff person just to make sure it's on his calendar for 2021. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like we'll probably see more of him closer to October. <laughs> I saw him on the news uh, yesterday. So I did see him. Uh, Okay, well, we'll move on to number four, chairperson's report. Well, I don't have the report, budget review, and uh, Raleigh Unity event. Um, I'm going to assume our budget looks the same. We haven't uh, used any funds. We have a budget to spend, but we have $65,000 in reserve. Uh, we received $10,000 from city council. And again, we need to use 
half of this by June 2021 and the other half by 2022. Um, so with, uh, with that being said, uh, at our December meeting, I may be speaking out of turn. With that being said, at the Raleigh Unity meeting, uh, the Fair Housing Hearing Board uh, made a motion to um, support that event by donating $10,000. I would like to make a motion to move that we reconsider our action to uh, support the Unity event funds from 10,000 to 12,000. Second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 All, aye. all that disagree. So, um, so Marquita, that, that would be our um, increase for uh, to support that event. Um, Marquita, do you have anything else to share with us as far as a report or anything? I mean, I didn't have anything, any changes for anything that had taken place that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah. No, so nothing uh, major. Just I sent the notes from your um, retreat for your work plan. So um, the goal is to have you all go before council on March the 2nd, that council date. So hopefully um, let me know if that works for uh, your agenda. But that's the goal for you all to present your work plan to council March the 2nd. So looking at the timeline, it would be great if you all can or you know, identify some people to pull your work plan together as far as the wording and all of that, like your goal with your successes from this past year and then your goals for the upcoming year and have that uh, to present to the Fair Housing Hearing Board during your February meeting. And you all can vote on it and we can get the communications to make it all pretty in the design piece and whatnot. And then um, get it submitted for the council presentation on March the 2nd. So I want to put that out there for you. Um, and then secondly, during the January 19th council meeting, uh, a fifth Fair Housing Hearing Board member was appointed, Eric Colburn. Um, I just got his information, um, content information this morning. So I'll be reaching out to him, just kind of like an onboarding and all that, but he works in the mortgage field I don't have much more, I don't have a lot more information other than that, but so you all do have a fifth um, board member. So hopefully I'll, I'll reach out to him and hopefully he could be at your February meeting. I'm sorry, what was his last name, please? Colburn, C-O-L-B-U-R-N. And you say he's in the mortgage industry? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. I should do a little research. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. That's all I have. I can step down now. We got somebody else in the mortgage industry. That's what we need. Uh, uh, is that it, Miss? Yes, ma'am. That's it. Um, and, the, and, oh, and I think you talked about the budget really quickly. So for this, from now until June 30th, or beginning of June, really, uh, you had $42,500 available. So you just allocated 12,000 towards the Raleigh Unity event. So you have $30,500 available um, in your budget. That needs to be? Spent by the beginning of June. By the, okay. So yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I wish it was private funds that my husband was like, babe, we got $30,000 we need to spend by June. <laughs> Have, may I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. Um, I don't know how much they cost, uh, but you might want to look into either uh, media buys or PSAs or uh, Facebook or Twitter or any of the social media uh, with fair housing ads. 
Um, they, hmm. we have done that at the Fair Housing Project on a very limited basis using a much smaller amount of money. <laughs> um, but that's one area where uh, you might be able to get out and do a lot of uh, kind of know you, you know, know your rights sort of thing where people are actually engaging. Uh, you know, the Facebooks, the Twitters, all the social media sort of thing, plus PSAs on radio stations, all of those, I mean, some of them may be public, but to the extent that uh, uh, you have money that you need to use, you could purchase uh, ad time. It certainly would further the mission of the hearing board uh, and would get it out directly into the community. You know, maybe targeted radio stations that you know uh, communities of color listen to specifically, or ones in Spanish uh, for a Spanish-speaking uh, community in Raleigh, just, just as a suggestion. Uh, yeah, on that point. Love it. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, are we aware of any uh, folks that do this locally and do exactly what you're saying, tar target minority communities or, or uh, ESL communities? Uh, like I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the idea of throwing money into the mall of Facebook, but if we could actually keep it within, say, the, the community of Raleigh, and we know some organizations that, that do that, then I am much more supportive of that. But I would, I would not be a huge fan of us tossing money at Facebook. That's for sure. I like the idea of um, promoting in local newspapers like the Carolinian, Triangle Tribune. Um, I cannot remember the local um, Latina um, paper, but those local papers and maybe some type of ad about knowing your rights mm -hmm. or just our anniversary is coming up. Mm -hmm. Que pasa en la conexión are two of mm -hmm. uh, the Spanish speaking papers. Yes, yes. And so our anniversary is coming up. So I'm thinking that um, in April also featuring that, you know, it is fair housing here in month and, you know, um, we're going to have this community day on this certain amount of time date and, you know, who the speakers are going to be and exactly what's going on. But I, I mean, I just think that's a great way to um, an affordable way to reach out to the community through those local own black and brown papers. That sounds awesome. And not just because of the pandemic, but I mean, this is a very uh, great way to move forward um, um, for communications in our community. Because some of the papers that uh, Wanda is talking about, I mean, they're, you know, they're free. They're just, you know, people can pick them up. I've picked up some um, that I didn't even know existed. Um, and I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, this is a great way for even what I do with Sean and I do in our job, you know, helping people with down payment assistance funds to purchase homes and stuff. I was like, what an awesome place to, to put an ad or share some information. Thanks, Jack. We will definitely, um, yeah, we'll definitely table that. Uh, table that one. I think that would be that would be great. We can use our funds in that manner, correct, Marquita? I never know yes. what we can do. Again. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's great. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty much all I have there. And Marquita, we will um, get together and and work on our pre presentation for, as a matter of fact, let's back up. You talked about the March 2nd uh, date to get in front of council. Is that something we need to vote on? Or how does this piece work again? Yeah, so the next steps would be you would vote on your work plan. Like you all say, oh, this is great. This is when we, what we want to present to council. But as far okay. as the date, you don't vote. You don't have to vote on that. That's something we work on internally. Unless you say everyone says March the 2nd doesn't work. And then I can look at the next council meeting in March, which would be. If we want to hit, if we want to hit March, what's our deadline for getting that uh, voting on the work plan? Yeah. 
by your next February meeting. Hold on, let me pull up the calendar. Okay, perfect. That yeah, if, if that's if we don't have like yes. a you know a month or two run up, that's perfect. Yeah. So if you have it by, because I looked at it before the meeting. Oh, let me just go back, make sure I'm correct. One, two, three. Oh yeah, me on the stuff. Oh yeah, that that'll be fine. So if you can um, vote on it by your next meeting, uh, that's sufficient. Okay. Cool. So should we take a? Should I take a previous version of the work plan and just start drafting up something that essentially is in, in the same vein of what we plan on doing? That sounds awesome because um, I think, as, well, as long as uh, we've all been on the board, it's pretty much always been the same format, mm -hmm. you know, and some of it, um, to answer your question, Colin, yes. Easy. <laughs> okay. Um, staff liaison report. I just gave my report, Madam Chair. <laughs> I'm done. I have nothing else to share. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Martin. Yes, <laughs> okay. Um, committee reports, Fair Housing Conference. Committee, Fair Housing Project Reports, uh, and um, Board Reports and Discussions. And Jack, thank you for joining us. Um, My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. And, um, and Ms. Arrow, thank you so much for joining us again. So I would give, uh, give, you, the, give you the floor. OK, so uh, folks already know that Lisa Rice, who is the leader of the National Fair Housing Alliance, has agreed to be our keynote speaker. Uh, she is already lined up. Uh, I, you know, she's dynamic. Uh, I think she's she'll be an excellent speaker. Um, we, it's my understanding that there were going to be two uh, sequential workshop panels. One dealing with criminal history issues specifically and the other one dealing more broadly with disability that was going to include issues like COVID as a possible disability, assistance animals, it's gonna, you know, that would touch on some of the various disability related issues. For the criminal history pa uh, panel, uh, Dawn Blagrove from Emancipate NC has agreed to be one of the panelists and Keisha Millette from the North Carolina Justice Center, an attorney there with their uh, second chance project uh, or fair chance project has also agreed to be on the panel. Um, I've called and emailed Kerwin Pittman a few times. I'm still waiting to hear back from him uh, as to whether he would be the third panelist. Um, I, I will call and email him again at the end of this week if I don't uh, hear back by then. For the disability panel, uh, Wanda Allen Abraha, who is uh, the head of your sister agency in Winston-Salem. Uh, she's head of the Human Relations Commission uh, group that enforces fair housing through the Winston-Salem ordinance. Uh, she was going to actually be one of the panelists last year before we had to pull the plug uh, on last year's conference. Um, she has agreed to talk about assistance animals and, and uh, fair housing issues. We are in the process of uh, getting one or two more panelists for that, uh, uh, for that panel. Um, I don't know whether we spoke to you all about, we were looking at to see if there was somebody, some agency uh, or company that you could potentially hire to do your uh, 
uh, all, all of the tech stuff if you had decided to do that. I mean, that obviously had never, hasn't been decided, but we had looked into that just to see if that was an option uh, and, and found out that the company that Legal Aid had used or that uh, uh, I think it was the North Carolina Access, um, what was it, it's like the Legal Access Committee, it was connected up with uh, uh, the uh, North Carolina Supreme Court, uh, their oh, equal access to justice, that's it. So they had uh, arranged to do a conference and we had asked them about how much it cost. And actually it seemed pretty expensive. It was like about $14,000 uh, that they paid to have a tech person do their, uh, their tech stuff. So we are not proposing that in any way. Um, just wanted to let you know that we had looked at that uh, just to see if that might be an option. Uh, at least the one, I don't know what the city is gonna be doing and, and what uh, you already have, you know, I mean, obviously the city has a lot of tech people, so maybe that's already uh, can be done in house. So um, I'm leaning towards and I, possibly, because okay, here's the thing. So if we do it in house with support from like our IT team, we'll need to use something like a WebEx. Uh, and I don't know if that's gonna be best for this type of conference, right? And so right. our IT doesn't support Zoom or any other format than that. So it'd probably be in our best interest if we can find like some third party yeah. company or group to handle this. Well, I we can only imagine, yeah. Mm -hmm. We will look for something less expensive than that. <laughs> uh, but yes, I think I, I think in speaking with Jeff, he thought that uh, something other than WebEx yes. would be better. And, uh, but even though there's not going to be breakout rooms or whatever, you are going to need somebody who is an expert and a specialist on this because you don't want people twiddling their thumbs waiting while there's a problem. So you want to make sure that, you know, somebody who's competent is doing it. So we will continue to look on that and hopefully within the next month we can uh, let you know. Thank you. Is that it, Jack? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's 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 all we have at this point. I mean, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Uh, we're well, still working, like I said, on panelists for one of the panels. Um, Pittman, if he doesn't respond, do we? Look for someone else, or we, or we just uh, you know we have either way. Dawn Laygrove is an attorney, but she's also a community activist, and so she was going to be um, Keisha Mollett was going to be talking about the legal parts of it, and Dawn was going to be talking more about policy issues. Uh, she could, I think, also talk about the community. Uh, okay. Aspects of it. Kerwin was going to be doing. He actually works for Dawn at Emancipate NC. And so he was gonna, and he is, I think, a community organizer or advocate. So he was the one who was gonna be hopefully talking about that in a pinch. I'm pretty sure Dawn can, can cover both. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I'll give it another week. Um, I don't know, I, I don't, I'm not taking it personally, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll try and, connect up with him. If not, I will ask Dawn if she can do both. Uh, it's just an hour and 15 minutes, including questions and answers. So, you know, if it ends up being two panelists, that's still fine. Okay. Nope, that will work. That's, that'll be our the backup plan. Uh, where am I? And of course, you're going to be mailing lunch to everybody. Is that correct? Correct. I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? All the conference for dinner. <laughs> somebody was sharing, if I may, somebody was sharing that, um, they went to a conference and it was like this one, they had some partner with some restaurants or something. 
And so people would go, they can go to like certain restaurants during that break time to go and pick up. I don't know. I, it would be nice, but I don't know what that looks like. I'm joking. I, I think logistically it would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I think it would also save us a good amount of cash if we opted out, but maybe, I don't know, maybe use coupons or something. So then, you know, I don't know, that doesn't work quite well either. No. Don't, don't, I, it was really completely a joke. No, but seriously, I was in a small conference and prior to it started, uh, starting, they had lunch delivered to all of us, like to, but it was probably 25 of us, but it was, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. I think we can assume if you normally get 250, when people, 250 people, when people are coming in person, uh, if, if people are sitting in their TV rooms in their houses, just turning on the computer screen, I think that you could realistically end up with 400 people watching uh, the screen. Um, now, maybe that ends up being, you know, way wide, maybe it's just 300 or 350. But I think you could still end up with a large in the hundreds of people who would watch. Because your, your outreach, I mean, the people who come who like your fair housing conference and who come to it in person uh, was always 250 at least. And so it's easier for them to plug in. Yeah, I would say just to ensure that we can support, you know, as many people as, as we're assuming is going to show up, any, any money, you know, venue and food that we can pour into having an IT infrastructure, maybe a group that actually like produces something for us. So let's say, you know, we, we worked with what RTN before, and I don't know if we ever got those videos, but, you know, work with someone that will actually give us videos. We can put those online. Like I, I like the idea of at least allocating the funds towards that. Well, we'll yeah, look for something. Are, um, that, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Jack. No, I'm just saying we'll look for something obviously that can support, you know, up to 500 people. Uh, to be to be on. Yeah, you were on your call, uh, Colin, and Jack was just sharing that they're searching for a third party um, organization to handle our uh, tech piece that they need an expert. Um, they had checked into the group Equal Access to Justice, but um, they had a pretty Health, uh, hefty uh, price tag of $14,000. So, um, but if yeah, anyone- I mean, I'm sure there's folks, yeah, I'm sure there's folks that, that do this professionally and yeah, I mean, hopefully can much, quote smaller than that, but you know, of course we're not trying to skimp here. You know, I don't want to, you know, pinch pennies, but like, unless they're giving us like the whole thing on recording that we can put and upload onto YouTube and our own platforms, then like, yeah, what? Yeah, sure, dude. Okay, $14,000, like for a day, you can hire some of the best people to do that on the tech side. Like that seems- So again, stupid. I was just letting you know that just for context. Uh, yeah. If anybody has anybody that they know of or can recommend, we will continue for the Fair Housing Projects part to, to look around. There's nothing wrong with, with a bunch of us doing that. Um, obviously nothing's gonna get signed unless the board agrees to it. So, um, you know. Yeah, correct. We'll you know, as we all sit in these different conferences, I have two coming up. You know, the, uh, the, the chamber, you know, they have, I, I've got like three different conferences on my uh, calendar that they're having. But I mean, even reaching out to, that's the only thing I can think of, like actually reach out to, organizations that are hosting their conferences the way that we're talking about and just kind of seeing who they're using and um but yeah i i, I definitely will ask questions so well we'll keep you in the loop uh and but but don't if anybody knows anybody obviously don't we we don't have a lock on this uh we're happy to to continue our search but if anybody as a connection, you should go for it. Well, if I find out something, I'll I, I'll shoot them to you. <laughs> that was that was like, oh, she's not. No, I I wouldn't even know what to say. I mean, I can definitely say that what we're, you know, what we'll be doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the logistics of it all. 
Um, I will be sure and share that with you guys. Um, logistics, marketing, other items. Well, we've already talked about the, uh, the Raleigh Unity event and we will not start to uh, discuss the fair housing um, community events probably until we, definitely not on this call. Um, you know, what we're gonna do to touch the community, you know, again, to utilize some of these funds that we have out of here. And, and thank, thank you, Jack, for sharing um, some ideas, you know, as far as getting the word out and, and other means of, of uh, sharing information with, with customers outside of, you know, putting a brochure in their hand or, or us actually being out into the community with the PSA information, et cetera. So we will work on that uh, going forward and definitely consider that as part of our marketing uh, going forward. Um, all of that falls under the community outreach piece of it. You know, right now the community outreach piece, again, is just working with, uh, partnering with um, human relations with, with what we're all trying to accomplish here in the next couple of months. Uh, old business. I don't know of any old business. Marquis, do you know of anything that we kind of had on the back burner that we should be touching? Nothing, uh, nothing comes to mind. Um, I think we've covered everything. Uh, well, Jack, we had our, I, I will touch on this. We, we did have our, which I'm going to next, our annual retreat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and talked about some means of um, how to expand our resources in the community, uh, community resources, and how to get um, products and information to the community. Uh, we kind of touched on this earlier. And some of the things that we've talked about here that's on our agendas uh, actually stemmed from our um, our fair housing uh, retreat. Um, Dr. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars actually shared a lot of things. It seems to be a lot going on in the background, a lot. Um, I guess we'll just be kept updated um, as far as uh, expectations of the fair housing board, uh, any changes. You know, she rolled out a new um, organization chart. So it's a lot of new pieces to it. Um, but in the end, no matter what the art chart looks like and who's doing what, in the end, uh, I think that the Fair Housing Hearing Board uh, will always be dedicated to uh, keeping the community informed um, so they can know where to go, who to call, their rights, um, et cetera. So our, our goal and who we are would never veer away from that. Our mission will always be the same. So, you know, it's just kind of nice to know uh, from Dr. Caesar again, what else is going on. It's a lot of new faces. The department, I mean, she has a whole yeah. department. I don't know, to consider the division. I don't know what it's called. It's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it's <office>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of change. It's a lot of change, but I look at it as, for, as far as we're concerned, hopefully, if we need assistance and something that we are trying to accomplish, we do 
we now have resources to go to. I know when I first joined the uh, board, um, there was no one to pick up the phone and call or email, you know, and I don't mean anything, it was Corey, but, but it, it was like the Fair Housing Board uh, uh, was this checkoff box for the city because it didn't link to anything. Yes, we went before city council. Most of them didn't know what we do. Uh, I won't say no one cares, hopefully everyone cares, but there was no one to brainstorm with or reach out to for assistance or, you know, it was Marquita, bless her heart, worked her to death. So as far as the art chart and Dr. Caesar and human relations and all these other departments that, that are also, we're all trying to touch the same uh, community. You know, it, again, it is nice. Like we're all gonna come together uh, for this first event uh, that's coming up on February the 20th. So unity is a good word. So I do like that piece of it. And, um, but again, we will just continue to do what we've always been doing. And um, well, you know, look at us as we are another resource. We are happy to always do trainings on whatever the topic is, uh, you know, and we are happy to provide materials and, uh, you know, feel free to use us in, in any sort of outreach uh, or, Kind of know your right sort of work that you want to do. We, we want to do that. And so uh, we see serving the hearing board as a way for us to do that. Well, we, uh, we appreciate it. Um, I, you know, I, we couldn't get the majority. We truly would not be able to, to function and do the things that we do without you, without you guys, especially our conferences. It's, it's such a relief. You know, I think people forget sometimes that we're volunteers and we're volunteers with everyday jobs. And, you know, in the midst of it all, you know, we try to come together and serve, serve our community. And so with that being said, it's nice to have someone, you know, like yourself, Jack and Jeff, that that's truly always there. And, and I hope that, you know, you guys don't retire before I roll off anyway. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I think I tell y'all all the time, like you all are definitely, definitely, definitely appreciated. Um, you know, everyone that support the, the board, you know, Marquita and Deja and Dr. C, it, it's, um, you know, it's not a tug of war. It's not a tug of war. Decisions are made and we move forward and try to figure out the best way to do something. So, but thank everyone. Um, Anyone has anything uh, from the the notes from the retreat that they uh, want to discuss or talk about a touch before we move forward? Okay. Again, thank you. Ah. Uh, oh. Board nominations? <laughs> I approve. Oh, I can't say that it's being recorded. <laughs> so you all can make nominations this meeting or um, you can't postpone it to the next meeting. Um, but yeah, so those are some options for you. I didn't hear from Chalice. Is she in labor somewhere? Jack, I think I today was her due date, so she may be. <laughs> <laughs> so I really didn't expect to see her, but I haven't heard anything from her. So, I'm, um, yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't miss a uh, Chalisa. <gasps> oh, <laughs> that's where she is. <laughs> Having a whole baby. Awesome. 
Well, that's about as good a reason not to attend a meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it's beautiful. Awesome. Uh, I'm a teller. She can still call in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she had a little girl, Jalen LaShawn Williams Stewart. Poor baby. Seven pounds, three ounces, 19 inches. And she's gorgeous. What a blessing. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Beautiful. Well, I was like, maybe she sent me a text message. And she did. She sent it at 1216. Okay. Uh, Wanda's on mute because she was in another meeting also. Oh. Um, yeah, we're getting towards the end of this one. I've been one foot in one meeting, one foot in the other. Hey. Well, we're almost done with this one. Uh, Colin, I don't know if you heard, but on the agenda is the board nominations. Um, well, it's three of us. We're missing Chalisa, but how does this work, Marquita? Would you help us through this right quick? Yep, so all you would do was you would open the floor to nominations for chair, vice chair, secretary, and People would just kind of make suggestions and um, then you'll just close the floor. And then what will happen is during the next meeting, um, I'll put the names on the agenda and then you'll vote on it. And you can also during the next meeting, cause you know, you'll have your uh, new member on the, the meeting. So um, we can open the floor, the next meeting also to nominations before you vote. So if that person wants to throw them, their name in the hat for something. Maybe secretary. So we're Kyle. just opening the floor yeah. <laughs> for nominations. Yes, that's it. You're opening the floor for nominations, take nominations, we'll close it. I'll document it and uh, we'll have it on the agenda for the next month. Okay. Uh, yeah, I definitely feel more comfortable waiting until we're you know not in a quorum, <laughs> especially with a, a, a little bit of a smaller board than what, we, what we're used to. Because I don't vote, am I correct? You can vote. You can vote for. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh and so yeah, yes. <laughs> so, am I opening the floor for nominations for the positions of chair, vice chair, and secretary? Um, open the floor for nomination for a position of chair. Now you say this, This Colin just made a comment that he will feel more comfortable, which I get and understand if, even if Chalisa was on the call, but do we still have to do this? Do we do it again? Is this just for the record or we can- Or what you could it? do, exactly. So what you could do is make a, you know, call for a motion to postpone until the next meeting. And then, you know, someone can second it and then you all vote. And then we'll just keep the same verbiage and just have it in your uh, February meeting agenda. Have it on your February okay. meeting agenda. Okay, I like that. Well, I make a motion to postpone the board nominations until our next meeting um, in February. Yeah, I, I second that. There you go. Yeah, I second that. Yes, please. <laughs> the all in favor will vote. All in favor. I'm so sorry. I. I'm in favor for for pushing it back. We need Wanda. Wanda Gilbert Coker. That's fine. I still have it. Okay, thank you. All righty. Action items to be approved or voted on. Well, we just did that. Um, all right, did you have anything you wanted to say or share or? Thank you for joining us today. It's good to be here. I'm just here to assist Marquita if anything was needed, but she has this under control. So, <laughs> and it's good all. to be with you guys. So I've been with you guys in a couple of meetings. So it's nice 
nice to be here. Um, I would say once um, you guys start working with the media piece, I'm, I'm more than happy to help uh, Marquita or your, or your team as well um, with some more ideas of, of media sources. And mm -hmm. I think uh, utilizing some money at this point would open doors for later on asking for freebies. So, you know, it just uh, opportunities of, yes, maybe we can pay a little bit here or there. And then later on, um, you know, you can always knock doors and say, hey, by the way, you know, we don't have funds right now, but can you help us out? Um, so it's, it's a way of partnering uh, with the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the money would come from you all, but I just want to let you know that there are pre-made PSAs and, and uh, template ads that can be uh, modified to your purpose uh, that, that we can help provide. Hmm. Great. That was going to be a request I was going to ask. Um, so instead of like having to create something, you know, right. from the ground up, if we can do that and then come up with a kind of a, a plan of action as because you have the funds available and maybe it could be like staggered and just come up with a plan of action. So I'll, I'll work with Jack to get some of that content and um, and I work with him as far as pricing. So it would be great if you all have like some, I know Wanda mentioned some papers and different sources. If you could send them to me and I can price it and pull it together for you so you can have that. Um, and Ara will be a great resource because if you don't know that she's the staff liaison to the uh, Raleigh Hispanic and Immigrant Affairs Board. So she'll definitely, I'll pull Ara with some resource, for some resources as well. Yeah, because so we can great. look at TV, we can look at radio and I have some contacts with them as well. Um, so we, we can look at additional resources um, and, and the, everything will be local as well. How exciting. Cool. Do we want to, um, no, I guess unofficially, just kind of start thinking about putting maybe a, a price on that once I get this basket of commodities that are set up and, and we understand how much we want to spend, we could probably parse, part and parcel that out and kind of get... Uh, you know, all that set up as opposed to discussing it at the next meeting, have some email communication, be ready for it, and then we can just call the vote uh, for that. Do we want to start looking at how much do we feel comfortable spending and um, start pricing that out in the meantime? Or do we want to wait until everyone's available? Well, I think it's always nice if you start to do things uh, in the background, especially when you're trying to figure out cost when you have no idea what things cost. Um, so it's like the supplies, you know, you kind of in the background, see what things cost. So by the time you have your meeting, you can kind of, this is it, this is what it looked like. What is it that we would like to do, can not afford to do what makes sense. So um, cool. yes, Kyle, I okay. agree. Yep, I'll start, I'll start looking into that. And Again, take those resources that Wanda listed. I'll I'll call up a few people that I know at, at those spots and see see how much they're they're charging for ad space and see what we can do. Okay. Uh, before we adjourn, anything else? It's one thirty. Oh, yeah. Um. Any other comments, concerns, action? If not, I move that we adjourn. I second that. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. I'm catching on to this, I move. <laughs> I move that we move. Bye, thank Jack. You. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Alana. Alana.